Can the Philippine military defeat the Chinese military? Your immediate reaction might be, how is this even possible? The Philippines is a developing country. How would it defeat a military superpower like China? But in this video, I'll explain the reasons why the Philippine military can indeed achieve victory against the Chinese military. Unfortunately, the Philippines doesn't get much attention in the media, especially when it comes to its military and the history of wars that it engaged in. So it's understandable if you doubt the idea of it defeating the Chinese military. Let's first discuss the Philippine military. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, are the military forces of the Philippines. It consists of three main service branches, the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy, including Marine Corps. The President of the Philippines is the Commander-in-Chief of the AFP and forms military policy with the Department of National Defense. The Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines serves as the overall commander and the highest ranking officer in the AFP. The Filipino Land Forces have a long history dating back to before the Spanish and American colonial periods. At that time, clans and barangays formed their own armed groups, mainly made up of hunters and warriors to defend their tribes or engage in battles with neighboring barangays. One significant event was the Battle of Mactan in 1521, when Lapu-Lapu led Filipino forces against the Spanish invaders. Although not organized as a formal army, this event is considered the beginning of the Philippine army. And this leads me to the first reason why the Philippine military can defeat the Chinese military. I normally don't ask viewers to subscribe, but I've noticed that some viewers might have the intention of subscribing and liking the video, but forget to do so. Take a moment and hit the subscribe and like button. It doesn't cost you anything. Experience in guerrilla methods. One of the most important reasons for the success of the Filipino resistance movements during the Second World War was the methods and techniques that they utilized. Among them, guerrilla style warfare. A guerrilla means a person who engages in irregular warfare, especially as a member of an independent unit, carrying out harassment and sabotage. The Filipino guerrilla groups that fought against the Japanese occupational forces and later the pro Japan Philippine constabulary were able to use these factors to their advantage. Reason number two. Philippine geography. The Philippine archipelago is a series of over 7,000 islands located between the South China Sea and the Philippine Sea. The islands are categorized geographically into three major groups, Luzon in the north, Mindanao to the south, and Visayas in the center. The mountainous terrain served dual purposes to the guerrillas, obscuring unit movement and hiding and defending fortifications. In particular, the Filipino guerrilla groups utilized the cover the forest provided to allow for easy retreats from strikes and engagements, and to hide their base, located at Mount Araya, from which they organized their operations throughout Luzon. While the Filipino guerrilla groups were highly active and being the most visible form of resistance, often targeted by the Japanese. What casualties they did suffer were minimal, and they achieved considerable success in their actions through the use of the environment as cover in guerrilla actions. Here is another example to show you how the geography of the Philippines could be a problem for the Chinese military if they tried to invade. Magellan led a group of 49 heavily armed men, which was less than half of his total crew. They had crossbows and guns, but they could not get close to the island because the water was too shallow for their big ships, so they had to walk through the water to reach the shore, and their ships could not help with cannons. Lapu-Lapu had about 1,500 soldiers with him during the fight. Magellan was injured in the leg while still in the water. When the crew ran back to the boats, Magellan protected them, making sure they were safe, but he got arrested and killed by many warriors. If China were to launch a land invasion in the Philippines, it would be difficult for them to win a war against Filipino soldiers. 
or experience in guerrilla warfare. Reason number three, experience in battlefield. Filipino soldiers possess extensive battlefield experience, stretching from the era of the Tondo Kingdom to more recent conflicts like the Siege of Marawi. I will not cover every battle in this video, rather, I'll focus on those that illustrate the extensive experience of Filipino soldiers on the battlefield. The Battle of Mactan on April 27th, 1521, was the earliest reported resistance of the natives in the Philippines against Western invaders. That's when Lapu-Lapu defeated Ferdinand Magellan. Apart from battles fought within the Philippines, Filipino soldiers also joined wars fought in other countries. The first Filipino to lose his life in World War I was Private Thomas Mateo. He was in the US Army, part of the American Expeditionary Forces sent to Europe. He died in France during the Battle of Chateau Tiwe on June 29, 1918. In the Spanish Civil War, Filipino volunteers fought on both sides of the conflict. More than 1,000 volunteers from different countries joined the nationalist forces, including Filipino mestizos. In August 1950, the Philippines joined the Korean War by sending about 8,000 combat troops to Korea. They helped defend South Korea from invasion led by North Korea, supported by China and the Soviet Union. Filipino soldiers also took part in the Vietnam War by providing support in civil and medical operations. About 10,000 troops from the Philippine Armed Forces were sent to South Vietnam. The last conflict that the Filipino soldiers participated in was during the Iraq War. The Philippines sent 60 medics, engineers, and other troops to assist in the invasion of Iraq. The troops were withdrawn on the 14th of July, 2004, in response to the kidnapping of Angelo de la Cruz, a Filipino truck driver. Then there is the martial law era, which began in 1972, during which military operations aimed to prevent insurgency. The army underwent reforms after the Etsa People Power Revolution in 1980s, becoming more involved in peace and development efforts. Recent events such as the Zamboanga Siege in 2013 and the Battle of Marawi in 2017 have tested the army's capabilities. 4. Strong Allies The Philippines' most powerful ally is America, currently the leading global superpower. In a traditional war scenario, the Chinese military would be significantly outmatched by the United States. The Philippines also has strong military alliances with Australia, Japan, Korea, Germany, and France. They are all armed with nuclear weapons. Some of them have military agreements with the Philippines. 5. The Mutual Defense Treaty The Mutual Defense Treaty between the Philippines and the United States was signed on August 30, 1951. The treaty has eight articles and requires both nations to support each other if another party attacks the Philippines or the United States. So if China decided to invade the Philippines, the US would likely step in to stop the invasion and might support Filipino rebels, making things even tougher for China. 6. AFB Modernization Program the Philippine government has given the green light to a revamped military upgrade plan named Rehorizon 3, which will involve spending up to 2 trillion pesos, about $35 billion, over the next decade. Under this plan, Manila aims to increase its acquisition of modern weapons and equipment to enhance its defense capabilities. The AFP modernization program started in 2012 and is expected to continue until 2037. By 2040, the Philippine military will have the necessary military capabilities to defeat China. Furthermore, the Philippines is the largest recipient of US grant assistance for defense in the Pacific region, receiving approximately $40 million annually for purchasing defense equipment and services. While the US is a significant supplier of defense equipment to the Philippines, it faces tough competition from countries like Israel, 
South Korea, Turkey, Italy, Spain, France, Sweden, and Germany. The Philippines and South Korea are finalizing a deal worth $4 billion for the sale of 30 FA-50 light fighter jets from Korea Airspace Industries. Also, the Philippine Air Force is getting ready to buy 12 AW-109 power light twin helicopters. The Department of National Defense is progressing with the purchase of 15 new medium lift fixed wing aircraft for the Air Force. Additionally, they're planning to buy eight full motion flight simulators. Seven, God is on their side. Don't underestimate the power of faith. Remember the story of David and Goliath. The Philippines represents David, a smaller and weaker force, while China embodies Goliath, a larger and more formidable opponent. So what's the story behind David and Goliath? The Philistines were attacking the Israelites. Every morning, a giant Philistine named Goliath challenged any Israelite to fight him. Goliath was bigger and taller than anyone else, and he was fierce. He wore heavy armor and carried a sword, spear, and large shield. No one dared to fight him. David was a young shepherd boy who had faith in the Lord. His older brothers were soldiers in Israel's army. One day, David took his brother some food. When he arrived at the army's camp, he heard Goliath's challenge. David asked the soldiers why no one defended Israel. His brothers were angry and told him to go take care of the sheep. But David knew the Lord would defend Israel. King Saul knew of David's faith, so he asked to see David. David told Saul he was not afraid to fight Goliath. David explained that once when he was looking after his sheep, he killed a lion and a bear. The Lord protected him then, and David knew the Lord would protect him again. Saul gave David his armor, but it did not fit, so David took it off. He decided to fight without any armor. David collected five smooth stones and put them in a bag. He took his sling and shepherd's staff and went to face Goliath. When Goliath saw David, he shouted and made fun of him. He said a shepherd boy could not beat him. David shouted back and he trusted the Lord to protect him. David said he would beat Goliath to show the Lord's greatness. David ran toward Goliath. He quickly threw a stone with his sling. The stone hit Goliath in the forehead and the giant man fell to the ground. The Lord helped David defeat Goliath without a sword or armor. 8. Great skills in close combat Filipino soldiers are trained in Kali or Arnis a martial art from the Philippines. It's used by military and police worldwide. It focuses on knife and stick fighting and includes striking and grappling moves. In Kali, the goal is to disable opponents, often targeting their arms and hands to prevent further harm. Chinese soldiers might struggle to beat Filipino soldiers in close combat. So there you have it. Eight reasons why the Philippine military can defeat the Chinese military. If you know more reasons, feel free to write them in the comment section. If you made it to the end of the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button before leaving.